air resistance and modeling the drag force. The drag force is generally proportional to the square of the speed of an object moving through air. There are some cases where, like small objects, where the drag force is uh, directly proportional to speed. We're going to uh, uh, use as a model uh, the force being proportional to the speed to a power p. And our job will be to determine the power p uh, from some data. So from the third floor of my building, I'm actually going to drop some coffee filters down to the ground. And here's a single coffee filter falling to the ground. And you'll notice that the speed seems basically constant uh, in our field of view. So the assumption is that the velocity that is reached by the time the coffee filter fell from third to first floor has become constant. In fact, that constant velocity is known as the terminal velocity. It's the velocity reached such that the drag force uh, has grown to the degree that it's exactly equal to the weight. Now, to get the terminal velocity, I'll just watch the coffee filters fall uh, while I have a stopwatch or, or phone uh, handy. And I'll just make note of the time when the coffee filter uh, reached the ceiling line to when the filter uh, hit the floor. Now, I've already measured the distance from the ceiling to the floor, and in my building, it was 98 inches. Now, from the times I showed earlier, uh, the difference was 2.28 seconds for a single coffee filter to fall that distance. So by converting the inches to meters and dividing, I get the terminal speed for a single coffee filter to be 1.1 meters per second. So it will now be your turn to get some data, right? So I have indicated the ceiling line and the fact that the coffee filters will fall to the floor. Now, it is a little difficult to uh, get the times as objects are falling. So I suggest you uh, set the YouTube to play at a quarter speed. And then with your phone, uh, depending on how you do it, you can use the lap timer, you can come up with some way. It will be a little easier to get the times uh, for each group of coffee filters to fall. Just remember if you do this to divide your time by four to account for the slowed playback. And in a notebook somewhere, keep track of the number of filters in the pack. We'll have a single filter up to a pack of seven. And the time that you determined after adjusting for the playback, just put the actual time uh, somewhere uh, in, a, in a notebook. And here we go. So each of those uh, falling groups of filters were in order, one filter, then a pack of two, three, and lastly, a pack of seven. So you've uh, recorded the number of filters, 
and you've determined the time uh, for each pack to fall from ceiling line to floor, you would then calculate the terminal speed V sub T. Uh, again, the 98 inches converted to meters uh, divided by the time. Uh, we will also have columns for the log of the number of filters and the log of the terminal speed. Uh, because again, we had the weight equal to the drag force. And now I've written the weight instead of as mg, I've written it as n times m1g, which means the number of filters times the mass of a single filter times g. And that, of course, equals our model of the drag force b, a constant times terminal speed to the power p. And again, our goal is to determine p. So taking the log of both sides and moving constants all onto the right side, uh, I get the log of the number of filters, log n, equals that power p times the log of the terminal speed, plus all the constants. We're not interested in the constants in this case. But notice that if y, if the y-axis is the log of n and the x-axis the log of the terminal speed, a graph of log n versus log v sub t should have a slope p. That is the number that is generally 2, sometimes 1. And in our case, we're looking to see what it is for coffee filters. So you will graph, uh, you know, do, do a graph of log n versus log of v terminal, include a linear trend line, get the slope, and that would be then the, the power p in our model.